Let me tell you a tale. A tale of the greatest pirate known to any man. A vampire pirate. Now I know what you're thinking. I don't believe in ghost stories. Oh, <laughs> you better start believing in ghost stories, Sonny. Because this one's real. You join us on turn 19, where I'm just starting to bring the Vampire Coast under my complete control. The Poxmarsh Clacks and the Blood Swamp now answer to the call of Arch Grand Commodore, Luther Harkon. Luther Harkon is a legendary undead admiral who rides to the helm of his deathly armada on his flagship, the Dread Abyss. With his mind shattered into numerous personalities by an ancient slan artifact, Luther will sporadically be overtaken by different personalities, each with their own drawbacks and benefits. Now he seeks to slay the terror of the deep, that is, the great merworm, Amadar, and raise it with his dark necrotic magic that he might rule the seas once and for all. Unfortunately, Lufer has not forgotten the transgressions against him from the reptile races of Lustria, and his relations with Lizardmen factions are severely diminished. Because of this, the Slan Hoapek to my west have declared war against us. They are not the only danger we have to be wary of in these treacherous lands. Just off of the Vampire Coast, not one, not two, but three rogue pirate fleets are patrolling the waters looking for victims. The Great Ocean is more dangerous than ever before for all the races of the Warhammer world, and these pirates will play a big part in our campaign. These legendary pirate lords are not just for show. You'll be competing with the rest of the plunderers of the ocean to become the biggest, baddest pirate in history, and we'll see them jostling for position on the infamy leaderboard. As you plunder the coasts and crush your enemies under a warlock boot, your infamy across the seas will grow and place you in higher regard amongst the swashbucklers that you're competing against. Speaking of, just to our north is Capitano Sissoko, the second most deadly pirate in all the world. So we need to be very cautious around your doom fleet. But if we do manage to defeat her, we can earn ourselves one of the fabled pieces of eight, grabbing us a regiment renown to add to our crew. Before we can deal with such lofty ambitions, though, we must first deal with a more pressing matter of Thark at the Underlin. He's beaten us to the site of the sunken vengeance that holds the star metal harpoon needed to slay the Greek merworm that terrorizes the coasts. Let's abruptly end their excursion under a hail of lead. <laughs> this battle takes place on one of our brand new island maps. No more order is open in the seas for this pirate. Those guys are well and truly off the plank, and we avoided taking any real losses. It's not just booty you earn from this victory, but invaluable pirate infamy. As a lord of the Vampire Coast, you'll gain increased notoriety when you take on battles of unlikely odds. When you find yourself vastly outnumbered, but still prevail. You see, pirates like Luther think there are bigger fish to fry than the world in vortex that dominates the landscape. They are more interested in tooling up to tame the legendary Burworm and harnessing it to dominate the oceans of the campaign map. By rising up to the top of the infamy ranks and challenging the three pirate lords that hold the secrets of the mythical sea shanties, you can imbue the star metal harpoon with their magic, forging a weapon capable of felling the mighty monster we hunt. Now that we've got the harpoon, we need to start gearing up for the bucket errand that lies ahead. Vampire Coast legendary lords come with their own flagships, which can be kitted out with unique structures to allow you to recruit and replenish no matter how far away from your settlements your adventurers may take you. Here's just a taste of how you can outfit your flagship. But right now we'll be building some bombards so that we can start to add some deadly artillery to our roster and unlock an awesome bombardment ability for Luther's army. It is only Lords of Legend that will be able to control these epic galleons, and as such your captains will not have access to these building trees. But by spending your hard-earned influence in the deck tree, you can recruit some notorious and dastardly admirals to join your armada, each kitted out with their own massive mobile fortresses. Pirates ain't known for their obedience and loyalty, and this is reflected in their overhaul take on the loyalty system. Careful management of your rowdy crewmasters is required 
or you could have a full-blown mutiny on your hands. We've got a bit of extra cash to spend, so let's go down to Captain Ronnie Bootsnatcher, who's about to colonize the Star Tower so that we can have complete dominion over the Vampire Coast province. Ronnie is a smuggler, which is one of the Lord's subtypes for Vampire Coast captains. If we want to keep him from turning our own crew against us, we need to keep him doing what he does best. There are several subtypes of lords you can recruit to your command, such as Isabella the Intrigant, who flourishes in ambush and lightning strike battles. Keeping your minions loyal isn't just a case of stopping them from scarping with our treasure, they also receive buffs and debuffs based on how happy they are to be part of our crew. Ten turns later and we've tracked down the 11th ranked pirate crew, led by Greenskin Ashok the Bloody. With a few new additions to the fleet, we're gonna take him down and steal his secrets whilst his ships are caught in the coral reef. Yeah, <laughs> see you later Ashok, and thanks for the buoy. We've taken his pearl of the Kraken Sea allowing us to take control of the Tide of Skewl, Regiment or known. These boys have perfect vigor and never tire, making them the ultimate tire pit for our shambling guttery line. On top of that, we've ripped an ancient treasure map from his bloody clutches, pointing us in the direction of even more long lost secrets of ancient power. Each treasure map may point you in the right direction, but there's still work to do after that, as you'll need to figure out the riddle to discover where treasure is buried and hidden. Digging for treasure is as simple as activating the treasure hunting stance when you think you've cracked it. With every pirate lord you murder on the high seas, there's a chance of unveiling a new hall's location. Speaking of riches to be plundered, the jaw dragon Bretonians have left a key trading port undefended. As this settlement is far from our start position, it would be difficult to hold on to it without dividing our forces. However, we even have our trick up our sleeves. <laughs> Let's establish a pirate cove. For the first time ever in a Total War game, you're now able to construct buildings in enemy territory right under your rivals' noses. There's a few different strategic approaches for utilizing this newfound power. For example, we can establish a tavern here which would spread our vampiric corruption. But cash rules everything around me, so we're going to be building the Picaroon's Hideout, which will allow us to siphon 50% of the settlement's income right out of Kofor's coffers. I'm sure you can imagine just how much money there is to be made if you were to build one of these in one of the most affluent cities in the game. <laughs> It's turn 41, and we've just completed a treasure hunt, solving its riddles which reveal the location of a massive haul of loot. We won't spoil the answer for you, but by completing our first hunt for booty, we now have access to the Curse of the Sea Mist Rite, which will envelop our territory in a dangerous mist, causing attrition to those who trespass. It also allows our monstrous units to vanguard deploy, which will give us some Blitzkrieg tactics in battle. On top of that, Luther has reached level 12, which has given us access to the big mama, Queen Bess. A pilfered and modified Empire Hellhammer cannon, Queen Bess is the most explosive artillery in the game, and it's our secret weapon as we take on the seemingly impossible task of taking a slice of Lawford's income for ourselves. Right now, they're making over 1500 gold per turn, and we're only just beginning the campaign. Imagine the gold will be siphoning away from those Ponzi elves when they're really up and running. Whilst Captain Ronnie is off hunting for gold, Luther has been raiding the high seas and amassing a deadly crew of monstrous units to join his gun line. No one's coming out of this one without scars, but most of us are dead anyway. 
Time for one big score to announce ourselves as the maddest set of bilge rats in the Great Ocean's Wars. Fortune favors the infamous. Curse of the Vampire. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, God. That's enough of that. Oh, Curse of the Vampire Coast is coming out on the 8th of November. You can pre-purchase now to get 10% off. Thanks very much for watching.